told and generally believing that in the United States, anyone can be president. It's an encouraging statement, yet it historically has not been true. Our presidents have been white, males, and almost all Protestants. 2000 marked a change. Evolution or revolution, I'm not sure. But let's pause just for a moment and think of what 2008 gave us. For the first time in history, an African-American male and a white woman were the two final candidates for the presidency. Unprecedented, revolutionary, it's opening doors, it is a phenomenal event, and you're participating in part of that event. So congratulations to all of you, because you, it's easy to say you're here as a part of history, but you're here on a part of big time history, because this really matters. The question is, what will the implications of this be for the next two, three, four presidential elections? Has a glass ceiling been broken? Has a racial ceiling been broken? Will our politics become more open? Will we become more the country we've always said we were, but never really lived up to? It's a great opportunity for America to do a great many things. Uh, but let me talk about the selection process in more general terms, and we'll break it down in more specific terms in the, the next couple of classes, next couple of days, as we get further into this program. I want to ask a very general question and try to answer it. The general question is, is this any way to run a democracy? Is our presidential selection process broken? Or is it, a, is it an adequate, maybe even positive, functional way to select the most powerful political leader in the world? After all, the United States has by far the strongest military in the world. You took the next 15 nations and added all their defense spending together doubled it, you still wouldn't match America's defense spending. Our economy remains, even with its problems, huge, robust, powerful, influential in the world. Our cultural penetration across the globe is astonishing. You can't go to a city in Europe, or really across the globe, and not see someone with a Michael Jordan t-shirt or a Britney Spears shirt, I'm sorry to say. Um, but our cultural penetration, our movies, our television, our products are all over the globe. Uh, I could go on and on. And so yes, the United States is a large, powerful country. But is the way we, the most powerful nation in the world, so that we select the most powerful politician in the world, does it make sense? Or is there a better way? Uh, Select, the way we select presidents, I would argue, raises serious questions about our commitment to democracy and our commitment to common sense. Maybe even our commitment to sanity. Is this the best we can do? I doubt it. James McGregor Burns, one of the great presidency scholars, said of the selection process, it is, quote, the worst top leadership recruitment system in the democratic societies of the world. Is it? Or is that just hyperbole? Well, we know it's very, very long. It's very, very costly. It's often media-driven. It's a grueling pace for candidates. It's disruptive and intrusive of their jobs and their private lives. It's overly personal, often demeaning. And so the question is, who in his right mind would seek this job? Who in his right mind would seek a job where what you did 30 years ago will become right on the front page of the New York Times, will be on Entertainment Tonight and all those other shows, and people will interview your friends and everyone about you. Now, I don't want to name names, but Charlie's sitting right in front here, and Charlie Kelly's from King College, is one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. And He's mature, he's bright, he's just a wonderful guy. Except, remember Charlie that thing you did in college? I'm not going to mention it. But Charlie did something in college that, well, wasn't very nice. He, he, he made a mistake. And the good thing is, Charlie, because he's so bright, <laughs> learned from that mistake. He profited by it. He learned from the mistake. He grew from the mistake. Became a much better person for it. Ended up marrying, became
became a great professor, highly respected in this community, and now Charlie is running for the state senate. Problem is, Susan here has a photo of that night. <laughs> Susan, unfortunately, is run on hard times, and the National Enquirer is offering her $200,000 for the picture. <laughs> 